Now, I don't want to fight, but I do want to argue. At least I want to talk about UiPath arguments for a minute or two. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, one of the reasons is because this is an important part of the UiPath Associate Certification Exam. As you can see here from the UiPath exam objectives, it says that if you want to pass the exam, you need to demonstrate an ability to describe the functions and differences between UiPath variables and arguments, including how UiPath arguments are used, managed, and best practices for using UiPath arguments. So to demonstrate how UiPath arguments are used and how they differ from UiPath variables, I'm going to open up UiPath Studio and create a brand new process. And I'm going to call it the UiPath arguments example click enter to create this. And as the project starts up, I'm going to open the main workflow. And on that main workflow, I'm going to add an assign activity. And in this assign activity, I'm just going to initialize and name a new variable. Now you can always use the variables tab to do that. But if you use the shortcut control plus K, it allows you to declare and name a variable right inside of the text field. So it's a neat little trick, shortcut control K. I'm just going to create a variable called name variable, main variable, and I'm simply going to assign it the value. This is the main variable value to start. I don't know, something like that. You can see it there. And so I've got this main variable. Now, what if I wanted to display that in another sequence, display the value of that main variable in another sequence, another process in the tool? Um, well, let's do that. Let's add a new sequence. I'm going to add a new sequence. I'm going to call it the in sequence. It's better to be in sequence than to be out of sequence, I guess. And to call a sequence from another sequence, you can just drag it onto the workflow. So I'm going to drag the in sequence onto the workflow in the main workflow. Click open workflow, which will open up the in sequence. And here, I just want to print out the value of that main variable, right? Get that value here. This is the main variable to display. So I'm going to go back to that sequence. I'm going to click on the activities tab and I'm going to add a message box. And I'm just going to try and display that the value of that main variable. Now, if I just type main variable here, you'll notice I've got an error. It'll say main variable not declared. It may be inaccessible due to its protection level. I don't know what you're talking about. Main variable doesn't make any sense here. And that's because variables only have scope within the block in which they're declared and, spe and more specifically or generally within the sequence in which they're declared. You can't just use a variable in one sequence that's been declared in another, but you can get the value of that variable into the sequence by passing the value of the original variable as an argument. So instead of saying main variable here, what I can do is I can go down to this arguments tab and I can create a new argument. I'll call it in argument. It's not a great name, but it works. Its direction is in because the value is going to come in from the main workflow. Its type is string. That all looks good. And it's the value of this in argument that I want to display in the message box. And so notice that my compile errors have gone. I'm now referencing a, a variable, really an argument that's within scope. And the promise is this argument is actually going to get its data from another workflow, from the main workflow. And how does it get that? Well, it gets that by mapping a variable in the workflow that called this sequence to the in argument. And how do you do that? Well, the orange box that just appeared on the main sequence is a bit of a guide. It's saying, hey, there's an argument used in the in sequence and we need you to map a variable to it. So I click import arguments. You can see in argument is referenced here. It says, what value do you want in argument to copy and use inside of the in sequence workflow? Well, I just want them to copy the value of that main variable, which is this is the main variable value to start. And now if I click run, you'll actually see that displayed in the message box. And that message box is used in another sequence. So now I've passed the value of a variable from one sequence to another by using a UiPath argument. Now that's an in argument. There's also an out argument. There's also an in out argument as well. So let's see how those work. So I'm going to add a new sequence and I'll call this the out sequence. Click create, go back to the main workflow and just 
drag it on after the first in sequence. So we've added it there. I'll click open workflow. And what do we want to do on here? Well, we're not getting data passed in. What we want to do is we want to manipulate some data, create a variable, and then pass that variable out. And so to do that, we're just going to add a quick assign activity. Now, you can use control K to create a variable in UiPath. You can use control shift M to create an argument. There's a neat little shortcut for you. And this argument I'm going to call out argument. Now again, that is the naming convention. Uh, in outer IO for in out arguments, lowercase letters, an underscore, and then the actual name of the argument. And your name should be better than just the word argument. I'm just doing that to use this as an example. And so there's my out argument. Now whenever you use the shortcut to create an out argument, always make sure that the argument's direction is correct. So it defaulted to out here, which is correct, but you, know, you might need an out or an in out property. Just make sure that it's specified correctly. Argument type string, that all looks good to me. And so now we want this argument to be passed to the original program. Now you should probably give it a value too. So this is the value assigned in the out sequence. So there you go, we've given this, val this argument a value. And now we wanna display that value in the main workflow. And so how can we do that? Well, we can add a message box. We can say, now the value is plus main variable value. And that main variable value should be getting the value from the out sequence. And I'm gonna come over here and just save the out sequence, go back to main. Notice that orange box has showed up telling me that I have to do a mapping for an argument. I click import arguments, it says, what do you want to assign the value of out argument to in your workflow? I'm just gonna say, well, after that workflow runs, I want the value of that out argument to be assigned to the main variable. Then we print that out. Now the value is plus main variable, and we should be able to see the value now displayed in the main workflow that actually comes from the out sequence. So I'll give this a run. You'll see the variable from the in sequence displayed first. This is the main variable. But now the next time it runs, the out sequence has actually updated the main variable. When we ask for the value of the main variable, it now says this is the value assigned in the out sequence, which is cool because even though that's the value assigned in the out sequence, we're actually referencing it in the main sequence. So the data from that other sequence has now been passed back to the main workflow. That's the idea of an out argument. Some languages call it a return argument. Now finally, there's also an in out argument. An in out argument is one that you can pass into uh, workflow and then if it manipulates the, the field inside the workflow, that then gets reflected in the variable in the calling program. So let's make this our final sequence. I'm gonna add a new sequence. I'm gonna call it the in out sequence. There we go, the in-out sequence has been created. And in here, we'll add an assign activity. And in this assign activity, we will we'll use that control shift M shortcut to create uh, an argument called IO argument. And that's the proper syntax naming convention for in-out arguments, it's IO underscore and the name of the argument. And I'll assign that to the string, just messed up the variable in IO sequence, just something like that. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you put in there, but just something to take note of the fact that we have messed around with the argument and then hopefully that changes the variable in the main program. Now, before I do that, I wouldn't mind just printing out the value. So proving that we're actually getting the value from the main workflow in at the beginning. And so at the start of IO, the argument is set to plus IO argument. So we wanna see what that IO argument is at the beginning of the sequence. And then, well, we know that it gets changed to just messed up the variable, but we wanna see that value reflected in the main workflow. Now there is one last thing that I need to do. If I go down to arguments here, you'll notice that the direction is out. That's no good. I want an in-out property. So I wanna not only get the value from 
the workflow that calls the sequence, but I want to pass it back as well. So I actually need to change the direction to in out. If you don't do that, it's not going to function properly. So make sure you got that. Also make sure the argument type is string. But once that's complete, I think I am good. I'm going to go back to the main workflow. I will then drag the in out sequence onto the main workflow. There we go there. Notice it tells me I have to map the arguments. So if I want to pass those UI path arguments, I've got to map the argument to a variable. And the variable is just the main variable. Now in the in out sequence, we print out the value of that variable at the start. I'd like to actually print out the value of that variable after that sequence ends and make sure that the value of the variable argument as it's manipulated in the sequence is actually sent back to the calling program. So the main variable value after IO sequence is, and then plus the main variable now. So that variable is getting changed quite a bit. Well, that's the whole idea of a variable. That's why it's called a variable and not a constant. Okay, so let me see. I think my arguments have all been imported and assigned. I think I'm ready to run this program. Now again, when it starts off, it's going to be the in sequence displaying the value of the variable. This is the main variable. Then the out sequence manipulates that variable. We print it out again. And when it's printed out, it says this is the value assigned in the out sequence. So that's the value of the main variable at this point. Then we call the in out sequence. So that value is going to get passed into the in out sequence. So when I look at the message at the start of the in out sequence, I should see that this is the value assigned in the out sequence. And look, I do indeed see that. You can see that right there. And then finally, we change the value in the in out sequence. Then we pass it back to main. Main prints out the value and now it says just messed up the variable in IO sequence. And so there you go. That is the whirlwind tour of in, out, and in, out arguments in UiPath.